Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Jeremy Gaines here with Hunter Pickcock. It's been a hot minute since we've been able to bring you some NBA discussion and as we have been away from Penn State since mid-March due to the coronavirus pandemic. But we're back and of course so is basketball now that the playoffs are in progress in Disney World. The conference semifinals are ongoing so we have plenty to chat about and get you updated on. So Hunter let's of course start with this very exciting Lakers series that we have going on as they're taking on the Houston Rockets. They held off a second half comeback against the Rockets in the last game and now the series is 1-1. What's the difference maker that you see in this series? First I just want to say shout out to the Belisellier gods for letting us be here today. But second off Let's get back to the NBA here. Obviously, the Lakers had a good game two win over the Rockets. The key to this series, it doesn't matter about those first three quarters. It's the fourth one that matters. The Rockets won that series, or won that quarter, if you will, 27 to 18. Then the Lakers won it 27 to 17. So that's been the key difference here. And if I had to put all my money into one basket right now, so to speak, I'm going with LeBron and company. He has showed time in and time out that he shows up when the lights are the brightest. James Harden, Russell Westbrook, not as consistent, so I think the Lakers are a slightly better team, and I know they had a rough game one, but they bounced back game two, and I think they'll ultimately be the one that pulls off uh, this series win, if you will. Yeah, big difference maker for me is I feel like it, having Rondo back now, you get a better guard play. I feel like in a lot of the games that they played so far in the restart, they were actually outplayed at guard. You know, you have that great front court, but you know, a lot of injuries and opt-outs for the Lakers, they just didn't have the same level of guard play that they needed to, and now they're finally starting to put it together. But now, of course, we have the Milwaukee Bucks saying a very surprising result so far. They were able to avoid the sweep, even though Giannis had his ankle injury and, and wasn't able to return to the game. Chris Middleton really put the team on his back there to keep the Bucks alive in that series. But what's your biggest takeaway, really, with the Bucks in this series? I mean, the biggest takeaway, I mean, got to give the Heat credit. They've, they've shown up. Eric Spolstra as a coach has shown up. But I think the biggest storyline from this series has got to be, where's Giannis playing next year? I don't know if he's going to want to be a Milwaukee Buck anymore. I mean, they overpaid Chris Middleton like he's a superstar, and the guy's numbers have plummeted since the playoffs have started. Eric Bledsoe, this guy's barely been on the court half the time. I mean, they have a lot of good players there, but not a lot of great ones. A lot of checks that I think Milwaukee can't bounce, and I think ultimately Giannis is going to bounce ahead somewhere else. Maybe the Miami Heat. Maybe he's going to take his talent to South Beach like LeBron did and ultimately be a Miami Heat player. That wouldn't shock me in the slightest. Yeah, that would have created quite the uh, big big group of players down in Miami, maybe another big three if they're able to get another guy. And you got to really love how the Heat are playing as well. The way I describe it is just incredible team basketball. Obviously, Jimmy Butler playing out of his mind, but guys like Tyler Harrow also really contributing to that team. And you just have a whole rotation of players that are clicking right now. Mm -hmm. And, of course, after that game, we now have the Clippers and the Nuggets, an interesting series where the Clippers really – manhandled the Nuggets at first, but the Nuggets are a good team, and they were able to come out and fight and win game two. So what have you really seen from them? The Nuggets are cute and all, but, like, I think they, they, if they get another win, I'd be surprised. I mean, the Clippers are a much better basketball team. Who on the Nuggets is stopping Kawhi Leonard? I mean, this dude, year in and year out, obviously, is great in the playoffs, but... You know, I don't think the Nuggets have an answer for him. Jamal Murray and Jokic, those two guys have played really well, both against Utah and I figure they will against the Clippers too. But the Clippers got too many shooters out there, and I think ultimately they'll lock them down on both ends of the floor, and I think the Clippers probably prevail in five. Yeah, Jamal Murray has been really fun to watch this series. He came back from injury and really became a spark plug for the Nuggets, who were kind of struggling a little bit and has made, especially that Jazz series was really exciting. But... Based on what you said, it doesn't seem like they'll be very long for this postseason considering what Kawhi Leonard's probably going to do to them uh, in the remaining games in that series. But, of course, we now have the, the Toronto series, and, and as we're recording right now, they're absolutely getting destroyed by the Celtics. Yeah, so it's not looking right now like they're going to be able to come back down from the uh, deficit that they're in. They, even though they tied it up, they started to play better team basketball, and Siakam, Pascal Siakam rather, was able to really start to put a couple good games together. But... You know, I guess it's a little, it changes the question now, but do you think the Raptors can win this series? They can still win this series. Look, they were down 2 0. -oh, never questioned the heart of a champion. They came back, it's 2 2. Series is tied. Game five looking a little messy right now, but I ultimately do think, though, that the Celtics will win 
this series. I just think they have more firepower and they have experience as well. That team went to the Eastern Conference Finals with Jason Tatum as a rookie leading the charge. Now he's a superstar, an up and coming superstar. Jalen Brown, he's the real deal on both ends of the floor. I mean, Kemba Walker, boogie down Kemba for crying out loud. He's been living for this moment. He hasn't played a big game since he was at UConn for crying out loud. Hornets couldn't get past the first round of playoffs. He won't even get there. So I do ultimately think the Celtics will prevail and most likely take on the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, it certainly is easy to forget how much experience the Celtics have despite having a core group of young players. And the Raptors, in my opinion, have also been a team that's needed to play good team basketball because they don't really have that one guy they can lean on to go off and put it into that second gear. Uh, Kyle, Rowley, Kyle Lowry excuse me, has been playing pretty well, but Siakam, they've really needed him to step up, and he hasn't quite done that until the last couple games of the series. So it looks like they may not be long for the playoffs either, despite having looked like, looked like they were playing really well for a while and having a chance at a title. Sure, Marcus Smart, too. I mean, probably the best on-ball defender in basketball. I mean, Celtics got that at their disposal, too. Yikes. And that does it for all the important storylines in the association for now. There's still plenty of postseason basketball left. So make sure to check out our Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for more coverage of the 2020 NBA playoffs. For Hunter Pickroff, I'm Jeremy Gaines. We'll see you soon. Thank you for watching our latest edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also follow us on Twitter at PSSNTV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.